right. Uh, so we are now going over gravity. And to start this, I'm going to do it in terms of looking at the equation sheet. Uh, really, all I'm giving you is the universal law of gravitation. And then we're just doing algebra to get these other equations. So like I said, UCM starts here, goes down to here. Gravity stuff is here, down, these four. So the base equation I'm giving you is FG equals big G, big M, little m over R squared. Okay, this is the new equation. I'm going to break it down and explain it to you. FG, that's force of gravity. We've already gone over force of gravity. What did we set it equal to before? Set it equal to mg, yeah. m times g, which was the acceleration due to gravity. That should look really familiar. Here is the more complicated way to get it, or more useful way when we're talking about other planets or moons or other objects that are very large. Okay, Force of gravity, what you need to know is big G. Big G is different from little g. It stands for the universal gravitational constant. What is a constant? No change. No change. So it is a number, and that number never changes. Any problem with big G will be this number. Where can we get this number at? Well, it's going to be on the equation sheet if it's a universal constant, if it's an important number. So it's going to be on this front side here. Under constants and conversion factors, you can find a bunch of stuff that's going to be useful in this, this unit. But we go to universal gravitational constant, big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. You see this unit here? That unit makes the equation balance, but you don't need to know it. You don't have to write it down or care about it. The unit doesn't matter. All this is to you is a number, and that number is 6.67. We're going to use e negative 11 instead of times 10 up to the negative 11th power because it's easier to type. You're less likely to mess it up when you have to put it in your calculator. So we're always going to plug this number in for g. In any equation that's got big G, we plug this number in. It is not 10. 10 is little g on Earth. Technically, it's 9.81. I'll show you where that comes from here in a little bit. Okay. What do you think big M and little m are on, when we're talking gravity? Mass. Mass. What do you think big M is? It's the big boy. It's the bigger mass, right? And little m is little mass. If I, we're talking your mass and the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Earth would be big M. It's the object that we're attracted to. Okay, um, R squared, what is R typically? Radius, and that's still true. Now, you could really think of it, instead of radius, you could actually think of it as distance. Most of the time, they are the same thing because we're looking at, let's say, on planets. I did this little drawing earlier, so I'll do it again. If I've got my planet here, this is Earth, and we got the moon orbiting it. The distance of the moon to the Earth would be the radius of this circle. Okay, so a lot of times they're the same. If I'm getting the amount of gravity acting between two people, which we'll do later, so we got a person here and a person here, and we want to know how much gravity is pulling these two people together, radius doesn't really make sense. It's the distance between them, but that would still be R, if that makes sense. Okay. Question so far? Okay, in terms of units, R is still in meters, just like it was before. We have to make sure that's in meters. Mass is measured in what? Kilograms. It's only unit that isn't that's a base unit that isn't like a technical base unit. So base unit for mass is kilograms. It is not grams. Base unit for distance is meters. Force is still measured in newtons. We don't care about G. We don't care about the unit. It's just this number. It's what makes everything balance out. Okay. Now, if Fg, which we can call weight as well. I want to make that clear. We call this weight when we're talking like a person on Earth. That doesn't really make sense if we did the force of gravity between the moon and the Earth. How much does the moon weigh? on? That doesn't make sense. But if we're talking, hey, if somebody's standing on a planet, how much do they weigh? That's Fg. Okay. You see how Fg is equal to big G, big M, little m over R squared? 
it's also equal to m times g. So what can you say about these two things? They're equal. We can set them equal to one another. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set, write it in red, big G, big M, little m, over R squared, equals M G. So I did these exactly as I intended, right? So this is little m, this is little m. What happens to those little m's? They cancel. So the equation you get, which is the second equation on that equation sheet, is little g is equal to big G, big M, over R squared. This is equation number two. Okay, that's where it's coming from. It's literally just algebra. Now, how does this actually play out? Well, to get the acceleration due to gravity on a planet, you just use this equation. So, for example, and I want everybody to get a calculator out. I want to make sure you guys have a calculator. Um, if you don't have your own, go ahead and use a blue one. You can still do it the same way. Okay. Uh, I use alpha y equals because I've got one of these. If you don't, it's okay. Just use parentheses on whatever you put on the bottom. So if I wanted to figure out what g is on Earth, what do I have us use in class? 10. And we know it's technically actually, do you remember the number, anybody? 9.81. It is negative, just means direction, right? So we'll still get the same thing either way. We should be able to solve for this. So we're going to plug in big G. Big G is 6.67. E negative 11. What do you think big M is? Yeah, it's second comma on this calculator. On the blue calculator, it is also second x to negative 11. It would help if my calculator was on. That. Okay. What's big M? We said it's the big mass. What are we talking about? We're talking about gravity on Earth. Earth. So it's going to be the mass of Earth. Where do you think you might find that at? On our pink sheet. Earth mass. It's already in kilograms. So what I use is 5.98. I'm not going to plug in times 10 up to the power. I'm going to put E24. So that's coming from right here. What do you think R is? The radius of the Earth. Where do you think we're going to find that at? Oh, wow. 6.4 E6. And what do we have to do with that? Square it. Everybody forgets the square. Make sure you square it. Oh. 6.67 E negative 11. Again, making sure you, make sure you're doing second comma for your E. Make sure you got the right E here. We're going to multiply that by 5.98 E24, and we are dividing by 6.4 E6 squared. And you can just put the squared right after. When you use the E, it treats the whole thing as one single number. It's going to square the whole number, not just the 6. So it's great. And I get 9.74. Meters per second squared. So why isn't it 9.81? Well, do you think the mass of the planet Earth is exactly 5.98? No. No, this is a rounded number. Same thing with the R. The radius is rounded a little bit. So this is probably 5.97 something, and this is 6.39 something. And with both of those being rounded and one of them being squared, it's going to be off by that little bit. It's only off by 0.07. That's not very much. Okay, so it's pretty pretty dang close. Make sense, everybody? So that's how we can do this. We're going to use this same equation on other planets so we can figure out what the acceleration due to gravity is on the moon or Mercury or Venus or Jupiter. Or a lot of times I put like planet X or planet Y because I just change the numbers randomly. Because I don't want to put Mercury and then make something up that's not right, if that makes sense. So I try and... Changes like planet X or Y if it's in a different place. So we use this equation to find acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity. G, make sure we understand this. We've been saying it all year, but it still trips us up. G stands for acceleration 
due to gravity. If you ever forget that, right here, acceleration due to gravity is little g. Okay, put it on. I should put it on the other side too. Maybe what? Okay. So next, here's what we got down here, right? We've got the moon is orbiting the Earth or some planet. So a moon is orbiting some kind of planet. What force makes it go into orbit? Gravitational Gravity. And it's going in a circle, right? So what we get is that force centripetal and acceleration centripetal. Those things both po point towards the center because they're center seeking. Well, that centripetal force is gravity. That's the only thing that could be applying the force between the Earth and the Moon because they're not in contact. That's our only field force. So acceleration due to gravity is AC. It's centripetal acceleration because it's moving in a circle. Those two things are one and the same. So with that, what I can do is I can take AC equals V squared over R. And when we go in orbits, what we're really saying is, well, AC is G. And we're just going to add a little O here for orbit. It's the velocity needed to put something in orbit when it's a given distance away. So in order to solve for VO, what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to bring my R up. So I'm going to bring R up here and cancel that. And how do I get rid of squared? Square root it. So the equation we get is that V orbit is equal to the square root of RG or GR. Same thing. Square root of that now. That's equation number three. And equation number four, last thing we're going to do is I know that little g is big G, big M over R squared. I can plug it into this equation. That's going to give me VO equals the square root of R times big G times M over R squared. What's R squared really? R times... R, right? So what do we see we can do here to simplify this? Cancel an R out. And we get that velocity orbit could also be equal to big G, big M over R. Are you ever going to need to do both of these for a problem? No. Does it matter which one you use? Yeah. I mean... If you have all the information, then it doesn't matter. But usually you're going to have, like if you're given R and G and you want V, just use this one. If you're given big M and R and you want VO, use this one. If you have VO and R and you want M, use this one. You would just have to work backwards from it. Okay? You can take any of these equations and solve for any of the other variables in it. That's pretty much what I'm telling you is all of this is we're going to read a problem. We're going to list what we're given. We're going to look and go, hmm, this one's got all the things. Let me just algebra. That's all you're doing. It's just writing down what you're given, and then unit conversion, choose equation, and algebra. Big algebra test. Okay. So let's look at the problem notes, which I have put here. OK. Hopefully I can explain this better than I did the third period. Okay. Number one. Also, let me know if I need to move my paper around. I might. Explain what happens to the gravitational forces between two objects as they are moved closer together. So this is FG. Cl moved closer together. What variable is that? What? Velocity. Not velocity. Closer is distance, radius. 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 So we want to change radius. So if radius changes, if it's closer together, does radius get bigger or smaller? Smaller. So making radius smaller, we're going, well, what does that do to the force of gravity? Well, the equation's got both is right here, right? 
So we're saying big G is a constant, so that won't affect it. We're saying the masses are not changing. We're just moving an object closer. So all we're really asking is, are, is F, G, and R, are they linear or inverse? So what I mean by that is F, G, is that on the top or bottom? Top. Is R on the top or bottom? Bottom. bottom. So if they're opposites, they're inversely related. So if R gets smaller, that means F, G gets bigger. Now there's a little more to it because what happens to R? It's squared. Is F, G squared? No. no. So that means this changing this has an exponential effect on F, G. F, G changes more than R because R gets squared. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this mathematically on 2 uh, A, B, C, D. It, like star this, you want to know how to do this. This is probably six points on the test. Questions like this, it might be more. i got to look at it again, to be honest with you. But I know we put a big emphasis on understanding these things. It's really important. Okay, so we got how much would the gravitational force between two objects change if the distance between the objects doubled? Okay. Now, on these other ones, I put like factor of four, factor of three, uh, increases by four or increases by four, right? What is doubled? That's a factor of what? Two. two. So understand that's a factor of two is what I mean by that. So all you really have to ask, your, there, there's a step by step on this. First step is, is this going to increase or decrease my FG? So if I make R bigger, what happens to FG? Smaller. Decreases. It gets smaller because they are inversely related. So as soon as I know it decreases, I'm going to write this like a fraction, and I'm going to put 1 over. Okay, I know it's going to get smaller, so I want to make a fraction. I want 1 over something instead of something over 1. I'm going to put my factor as 2. What happens to R in this equation? Squared. So I'm going to put a 2 here. Okay, once I've got that, I'm going to simplify this to really a ratio of it's 1 over 4. And what I would say the answer to this is, is it got 4 times smaller. Okay, this is the best way I can think of to explain this because this is how my brain works. If it works different for you and you got a good idea, let me know so I can hear it because uh, I'm just going to show it a bunch of times. Yes, sir. Because uh, we are doubling the distance, which means we're doubling R. So we're just putting the change we are making to that variable. And then anything that's done to it. So if it's squared, we square it. If it's not squared, we don't square it. And for B, it would be 4 squared? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going get, to get to that. So B, I'm going to do on the left-hand side so my writing doesn't overlap. If distance is decreased by a factor of 4. So if it's decreased, what's going to happen to FG? It's going to get it's going to increase, it's going to get bigger. So instead of putting 1 over, I'm going to put over 1. I put my factor on top. I've got a factor of 4. We're still talking distance, so what happens to R? It gets squared. So this simplifies to 16 over 1, which means it's 16 times. And is 16 over 1 bigger or smaller? Bigger. Is this making sense, I hope? This is the best way. And you can reuse this thinking on any question that asks you is something similar. If we take a different equation, we say, hey, if we double, uh, double time, what happens to velocity? You can do stuff like that. Okay, mass of 1 increases by a factor of 3. So if I increase mass, is mass an inverse or a linear relationship with FG? FG is on top, M is on top, right? We're changing one of them, so it's linear. So whatever I do to M happens to FG. So if we increase this one, this other one's going to increase as well. So this is going to be over 1. It's a factor of 3. Is M squared? No, because we're just changing one of the masses. So it's just 3 over 1, which is 3 times, and it's bigger. Now you might get some problems like this, and I would say you definitely will. 
If the distance increases by four and the mass increases by four, then what happens? We're just gonna combine two steps. We're basically gonna have two fractions. We're gonna combine those fractions and then summarize our answer. So distance increasing, what does that do to FG? makes it smaller. So we're going to have 1 over 4. What do we have to do to that 4? Square it. Then we're going to multiply that by, okay, mass increases. Does that make it bigger or smaller? Bigger. So it's going to be over 1. It's a, also a factor of 4. Do we square that? Nope. So now we combine. We're going to get 4 over 16. The way I teach it is let's reduce it down to a 1 to something. It's really a ratio, right? So 4 to 16 is the same as 1 to 4. And we would say that's now 4 times smaller. So whenever we put into the ratio, we simplify it. If the 4 was on top, it would be 4 times bigger. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's how I like to do it. We will always just simplify. We basically put it in a fraction, and then we want to reduce it to something over 1 or 1 over something. And then this is the number. If it's on the bottom, it's smaller. If it's on the top, it's uh, bigger. Questions there, y'all? Okay, and we'll get some more practice with it tomorrow and next week because it's something I really want to drive home, but it might be something that just takes seeing it a couple different times and practicing a couple times to get it down really well. Okay. Uh, number three, calculate the gravitational force of attraction between two 75 kilogram people standing 0.4 meters apart. This is FG. What is two 75 kilogram people? Mass. And there's two of them, so it's going to be M and M. So we've got two slim shadies here. Uh, that's 165 pounds ish. So, yeah, 0.4 meters, what's that going to be? Radius. Even though we're not going in a circle, that's how far apart we are. So, do we have an equation that's got F, G, M, M, and R? Yes. What should we use? First, the first one. Yeah. And we know what's big G. We're not given it, but it is a constant, so we always have it. So we're going to do FG equals big G MM over R squared. Um, so we understand big G out in the front. It's still we're just multiplying by big G. So I just, when I'm writing it, I put big G M and M all on top and then divide by R squared. It's the same thing. It's cleaner looking, I think. So I do it that way. We're going to plug in. 6.67 e negative 11 times 75 times 75. You could square 75 and get the same thing. And we're going to divide by 0.4 squared. When we plug in the calculator, again, I need everybody to plug this in, making sh sure we're getting the same thing. If you make mistakes in the calculator, you're going to lose points. you got to show work on the test so that I can take off two points instead of ten points or something. You know, uh, But I want everybody to go through and do this. If you don't have a yellow, get a blue one. You can still do it in the blue one. You just don't do alpha y equals. Put parentheses around anything in the bottom when you divide, and you'll be okay. So parentheses around the whole bottom there. And yeah, so alpha y equals, that's not alpha y equals. And we get 2.345. E negative 6. No? So we want to see what we did. Did we use the right E? Did we use second comma? You good? Yeah, we're good. I didn't do E or something? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, so here, what's our unit? 
It's force, so it's noon. That hasn't changed. Make sure you're getting that same number. If you're not getting that same number, let me know so I can come see what we're doing. Uh, most common mistakes are if you get error, it's either you're using the wrong E or you did a minus instead of a negative sign. So, yeah. Questions? All right. Number four, calculate the force of gravity. So that's FG of a one kilogram mass, that's M, if it were two Earth radii from Earth's center. So what else are we really given here? We've got FG, we've got little m, radius. What is the radius going to be? Uh, uh, that's Earth's mass. We want radius. And when it says two Earth's radii, or radii, I don't know how to pronounce that. What does that mean? Two no, not square it, but times. double it. So trick, you can do 2 times 6.4. 12.8, so you can do 12.8 E6. Okay, you don't double the exponent as well. You just double whatever's in front of the E. Or you could plug in 2 times 6.4 E6 in your calculator, as long as it's all in parentheses, and then square it, and that would be okay. Both of those will work. And then what's our other mass? We're only given one. Well, what's supplying a force of gravity to the mass on Earth? Earth's mass. Yeah. We just want to use the 5.98. So don't forget that. So we got Earth's mass. Earth's going to be the big M. So when you plug in here, we're going to get 6.67 E negative 11 times 1 times 5.98 E 24 over, again, you can plug this in, 2 times 6.4 E6, I'm going to do 12.8 E6, and then square that. Both of those should work, should get you the same number. Two point four three. How many times smaller is this going to be compared to if it was just a normal Earth's red radii? So we doubled it, right? So we one fourth. We if we double it and then we square that, and I, I could show you if we just plug in six point four instead. We get that. Divide by 4. Same thing. Oh. Calculator isn't up here. If I change it to 6.4, I get this. If I divide it by 4, I get my answer again. It's 4 times small. Number 5. Rocket is launched at a speed of 4,520. It's parallel to the surface of planet X. This should say surface of X, not Mercury. And it goes into orbit around 3.76 E6 meter radius planet. What is the value of G near the surface of Mercury? Uh, what's 4,520 meters per second? What variable? Velocity. Velocity. So VO. 3.76 E6 meter. Radius. Radius. And we're looking for G. Do we have an equation with VO, R, and G? Ah, cool. So we're going to write it down. V up equals square root of GR. What are we solving for? G. So how do we get rid of square root? Square. So we're going to get VO squared 
would equal g times r. And what do we do with r? Divide. We should look real familiar. b squared over r equals a. That's basically what we're doing. You plug in. And you should get 5.43 meters per second squared. That's well, pretty much it. We're just looking at variables. One thing to pay attention to, okay? And so we understand this. If you don't understand what's going on, draw a picture. Okay. We got to calculate the force of gravity between an elephant and the sun. By the way, the mass of an elephant is 6,300 kilograms. It's like 13,000 pounds. That's a big elephant, but that's about the weight of a very big elephant. 13,000 pounds. They're huge. Question on the practice is a moose. And those are also very big. I think I made it two times as as big as it should have been. They're about 1,500 pounds. I think I put 1,500 kilograms. So, But most of my numbers are pretty accurate here. Anyway, when the sun is at its closest to the earth, we want to know what's the force of gravity on the sun acting on the elephant. So the sun does pull the ele an elephant towards it. The sun pulls you towards it right now. It's just the earth pulls us harder. Why? We're, closer. We're way closer and distance is squared. Distance has a bigger impact than mass does because of that square. So here's our picture. We've got the sun here. We've got the earth down here chilling. And this is not to scale. But we've got our elephant on here. And you got some big floppy ears and maybe they got legs and stuff. There's your elephant. There is a force of gravity, again, not to scale, pulling the elephant towards the sun. Technically, the sun is pulling the elephant towards it as well. Or the elephant's pulling the sun towards it. I think I said that right. So, what do we know? What are we given? So we want FG. We're given mass. Is this little m or big m? That's little m. That's big m. But does it matter? You're just multiplying the two, so it doesn't matter. Okay, It only matters when you have an equation like this that's only got one mass in it. Or will it ever have a solve for bigger little mass? Yes. Yeah, good question. Uh, I believe part... Uh, down here, part E has you do that. Okay, And then we are given the distance. This distance... What's the units? Kilometers. kilometers. What's our base unit? Meters. So to go from kilometer, kilometers to meters, when it's already in an exponent, you got two things. Kilo means 1,000. You can multiply this by 1,000, and you could do 1,496 E8. Or what I like to do is I just like to make the exponent E11. I'm just going to add 3 to the exponent. So when I plug this in, I'm thinking of it as 1.496 E11 meters. That's how I'm thinking of it. Whatever works for you, whatever helps you, you do that to go from kilometers to meters. You do not need to go from kilograms to grams because kilograms is a base unit. Okay, so that's really important distinction. It's something you got to understand. Kilograms is our base unit for this stuff. Uh, why don't you go ahead and try it? I've got the answer key up here for the rest of the stuff. Try some problems. You got the rest of the class to work on this. Tomorrow, all we're doing is well, the practice. So it's the same stuff over again. Uh, we're going to quiz. I don't remember if it's on Monday or Tuesday, but I just don't remember. I think it's on Tuesday. And then we're going to do problem set and review. Wednesday, Thursday, test Friday. The quizzes is due tomorrow. The quizzes from yesterday? The graded one. The graded one? I wanted it done yesterday. Oh. Did y'all not finish yesterday? No. Uh, you should do that. Yeah, um, have that done by tomorrow.
wanted it by tomorrow. I might have extended the due date, but that was for people who was absent. I was Yeah. Yeah, you are special. Yeah, where is Trey? That's why it's so like good today. See, yep. Yeah, two e thirty. But just this one, because kilometers to meters. Uh, we want mass to be in kilograms, so those two are good as is. Where is Turd at? He's up here, so y'all can check as you go if you want. Uh -huh. What up? <laughs> My man. <laughs> Crap, now I have to listen to my terrible.